It is a question amongst philosophers whether in scientific studies the end justifies the means. For example, much of what we know about dehydration and freezing comes from experiments by Josef Mengele in Auschwitz. Is it moral to accept this data as credible, even if it's the only data we have? Although his actions were immoral, it might be best to utilize the findings of unethical scientists for the greater good. Quite a step down from Mengele in Nazi Germany is an experiment known as the Monster Study. Although the Monster Study is an unethical experiment and traumatized its participants, it is one of the only pieces of literature that follows the scientific method and documents some of the possible causes of stuttering. The Monster Study was a stuttering experiment performed on 22 orphan children conducted by psychologist Dr. Wendell Johnson at the University of Iowa in 1939. Dr. Johnson grew up as a stutterer, and although his stuttering improved with age, he still stuttered late into his life. As a consequence of his stuttering, he had the idea to conduct an experiment to try and identify the main cause of stuttering. At the time, it was generally believed that stuttering had genetic causes, one of the more popular theories being that stuttering was caused by a cerebral imbalance. For example, a left-handed person using their right hand to write might cause neurons to misfire, affecting their speech. Dr. Johnson did not believe this theory, and was determined to determine the true reason some people stutter more than others. The research began with the selection of 22 orphan children. It was a blind experiment, meaning the children were not aware of the experiment and were simply told they were there to receive speech therapy from the university. Graduate Mary Tudor conducted the study and organized the children into two groups of 11. Each group contained five children that the orphanage claimed were frequent stutterers, and six children that had normal speech. The first group were praised and told that their speech was fine and that the five stuttering children in that group would grow out of their speech impairments. This control group found only positive results from the speech therapy, and some of the children made minor improvements to their fluency and articulation. The second group of children, however, had nothing but negative reinforcement and were told they were very bad at speaking. The verbal abuse went as far as the researchers telling the children in the second group, the staff have come to the conclusion that you have a great deal of trouble with your speech. You have many of the symptoms of a child who is beginning to stutter. You must try to stop yourself immediately. Use your willpower. Do anything to keep from stuttering. Don't ever speak unless you can do it right. The children in the second group responded to the experiment immediately by having a serious and significant loss in the ability to articulate thoughts. It is said that all the children's schoolwork fell off and none of the children in the second group would talk freely at all. Of the 11 children in the second group, including 6 children that were proficient speakers, 10 of them were stutterers in less than 4 months. As the children aged, it became apparent that none of the orphans retained permanent stuttering problems. However, all the participants of the second group were observed to be more vocally reserved. Some became self-conscious and reluctant to speak at all. In 2001, 60 years later, an investigative reporter concluded that several of the orphans had long-lasting psychological effects stemming from this experiment, and in 2007, seven of the surviving orphans of Group B were awarded $1.2 million from the state of Iowa for a lifetime of psychological and emotional scars. Despite this settlement, it is still unclear what harm this study did to the children. None of them retained stuttering problems, however their speech was likely negative affected by this experiment. Today, the American Speech, Language, and Hearing Association prohibits experimentation of children when there exists a significant chance of causing lasting harmful consequences. Nowadays, we have a better understanding of what causes stuttering, and speech pathologists generally agree that stuttering problems in adults result from abnormalities in speech motor control, such as timing and sensory and motor control. Researchers have also found that stuttering is genetic and runs in families, which kind of goes against everything that Dr. Johnson theorized. It is still a question of whether the study might be ethically valid, since it's unclear whether the end justifies the means in this instant. The monster study is one of the only experiments conducted that studies the causes of stuttering, and because of this, the results are often cited in scientific articles. Either way, this is just another example of a study designed to be beneficial and informative, causing much harm to its participants. Thanks for watching. Bye everybody. You're my friend now. We're having soft tacos later.